Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw. So this is your life, and you kind of, when the anchor of the photo has one, two, three, four, five, fo- five women together uh, in what looks like a cave with a light in the background on the walls. You're all dressed rather nicely. Oh, it's probably not a cave. It might be because you're all holding up glasses of wine that yours, I don't see your glass of wine. No, yours has a bit of wine, and I could just see it in the background. These big, beautiful glasses with red uh, one woman's glass is empty. Like she just went right through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're all together. The smiles aren't as warm as the smiles of your family. I don't know how you got the photo, like in the photo of your family with giving it up with such laughter, because that's a tough thing to get from kids to have just that open. In- so I don't know what joke you made. <laughs> like that is missing a little bit from this photo. Cause this year all together, it looks like colleagues together in maybe a wine cellar. Sweet photo. Bunch of friends together, maybe colleagues together. Um, what's this? So this is my bachelorette party with my mom, my sister, my aunt, and my cousin. Okay, well, okay, this is, okay, so totally not what I was expecting. Who is your mom? Because you all look the same age. It looks great. <laughs> I know, my mom. So my mom is, I'm trying to see, I'm trying to think of the, the picture, I'm trying to get an image of the picture that I sent. Is there someone with glasses on? Yeah, yeah. That's my mom. Okay. Yeah. She could be the one who's polished off her glass first. <laughs> I would, that would not surprise me. I, that would not surprise me. Awesome. Yeah, we went to Napa for a long weekend. Uh, right before nice. I, or probably like the fall before I got married. So this, yeah. So this, so how long ago was this photo? Uh, we got married in 2016, so seven years ago. Okay, okay. So the the immediate question is why? Like, what can we learn from this? Why why put this photo here? Well, it's for me. It was just strength and resilience of those women. I just mm-hmm. grew up in an environment where these were the most formative, for better or for worse, the most formative people in my life. I you know, and so that was and you know, we had been through some challenges and like continue to go through some challenges, but I think there is just this this connection and this safety that exists in this Space and mm-hmm. this honesty and like a place where you could have some hard conversations. Mm. Um, this group of women, we would always, and my grandmother, my mom and my aunt's mom and I were, were super close. And so there was this kind of passing down of traditions and expectations, which sometimes are good and sometimes are bad. I think this is just like such a, these are all women that have been either been with me my entire life or I've been with them their entire life. Mm-hmm. My sister's five years younger, my cousin's 10 years younger, but there is just a, I think family, whether it's your birth family or your chosen family, there's just like a knowing it mm-hmm. uh, and an acceptance that is, is there that I think is, again, it, it's the, the roots. It kind of keeps you, grounded it doesn't mm-hmm. let you get too ahead of yourself i sure. think there's always accountability there you know what i mean it like mm-hmm. keeps you in check in a lot of ways yeah. also biggest supporters biggest fans the ones always cheering the loudest yeah. and you're it's also you gotta like unload the dishwasher after you play yeah. in the championship game kind of sure thing. only because i can like as i'm listening to you i'm, I'm trying to make connections to this no- notion of of leadership leading with courage because in the, the 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 sweetness of the photo is also that you're all together because you know one another and in a way i think it's you're all holding each other there's a big sort of group hug feeling and mm-hmm. there's no way of knowing who is the 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 focal point in a sense mm-hmm. of the you know is it you know, the woman on the right, the woman on the left, the woman in the middle, you in the back, you're all equally present. Like there's no there's no hierarchy uh, mm-hmm. necessarily 
so if I try to read this through the, the, the lens of, of leadership, of leading with courage, how would you address like a teachable moment if some, when, where somebody doesn't know, it's just like, it's a group photo of you in the cellar drinking wine. Mm-hmm. What can we learn about leadership from this? I think that it's, I think my thought in that would be that it's important to take the time to celebrate. Okay. To take the time to acknowledge the small accomplishments. And certainly me getting married was not a small accomplishment, but but there was a presence of all of these people coming from across the country to wit- to bear witness and celebrate that moment. And mm-hmm. I think that there's so many times that we stumble or that, that you know, we have these, all these small finish lines. It's almost like in business, you're not, you never get to the final finish line, right? There's mm-hmm. the new deadline, the next thing, the next thing. And how do you find your people and really acknowledge those milestones mm-hmm. and, and not glaze over them for lack of convenience or, or the things? Like, I, I think we don't celebrate enough. Okay. When we do in business, when we do something, because you can't celebrate, I mean, you can celebrate the completion of the project, but you're never going to, you know, it's not like school where you finish the semester and then there's a break. Like it never, uh, it never yeah, stops. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like life is that way, right? It never stops. So if you don't prioritize celebrating those things, big or small with your people or the people you accomplish them with or whatever, then you never will. Right. And 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 we ju- we 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 must like it helps us it helps us find the joy it helps us have something to look forward to it fosters in you know in business it fosters the connection like I think there's something you said for the yeah we did this mm-hmm, mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. I like have the mug to prove it kind of deal I think that that continues to build that trust that collective acknowledgement I think is just is critical mm-hmm. and I think leaders so often set the time frame that they're the ones that have to be no. I know we've got meetings all next week, but we are leaving at noon today and we're having a long lunch right. because we're going to talk about the completion of this almost like a, it's almost like therapy, right? Of like getting it through. You, when you move to the next and move to the next and you don't take time to acknowledge, you also don't take the time to reflect and fix best practices or find resolutions or all the things, right? That, that are not just we're not just cogs completing projects. We're humans that were affected by the process. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think there's some humanity in that celebration. Yes. Okay. So we're, we're just pulling out of the pandemic and we're pulling out of like the, the dramatic change reorientation of communities, of our societies, of our families, of how we live to all of a sudden reorient things where all of a sudden you have to work from home. All of a sudden you have to, to kind of reorganize what you think the world works or how the world works. So you're, so it's true that, you know, you have to take a moment to sort of to celebrate. Like, you know, a wedding really is, okay, we're going to, we're going to stop. What we're going to do is we're going to stop the, the train, let everybody get off so we can all say, oh, look, we're all in this together. We're here. This is what we're doing right now. So how has your thinking shifted in terms of celebration, in terms of leadership? And I love how the, this notion of step up, step up as their title is the kind of the, the, the culmination or the, the core idea. And you've got the feet and then you've got your sons who, who as they are born and, and learn to walk and learn to talk, these are fundamental things about being human. Bringing together leadership and celebration and stepping up. How has your thinking changed because of the pandemic? And and I know I can see in your face you're just like, what is the question? But how has your how has your your thinking evolved in the past three years from that moment of you together in that cellar? I mean, I think it has to just be expansive. You know, like I didn't know sitting in that cellar, I had my ideas of what 
I mean, my dad was still alive at that point, right? Like I had my ideas of my trajectory. I had my ideas of what marriage was going to be like. I had my ideas of what parenthood was going to be. I had all of my ideas and pandemic or not, those like all exploded. Mm -hmm. None of them were rooted in reality. (laughs) They were rooted in like in some fairy tale version of what people tell you it's supposed to be like, or Mm -hmm. maybe the filtered lens that you see. And that is not what it is. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I, I feel like I give my parents credit and also blame because their marriage never looked hard. Mm. And I know you can't have two humans and have it not be hard. Mm-hmm, <laughs> like that's mm-hmm. an imp- it's an impossible thing. So they hid that from us, which was great. But then I had this weird expectation that if I mean, for the, my first formative relationships the first fight i was like well i guess this isn't gonna work and i would like walk Uh, away right like so i think that there's so i feel like i had these expectations i had these expectations of what parenthood are going to be like because people don't tell you how hard it is yeah yeah right like that's not not like your selling point i feel like my people don't (laughs) (laughs) oh i don't i mean i think i think we hear that it's hard, but until Maybe you're, we don't believe it. Until yeah. you're in the trenches, you don't know how 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 shit work can really be. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Like you don't know, you just have no idea. And I don't mm. think I understood like the scope or scale of the intensity mm. of it. Both like the love. Like, I remember hearing somebody say feels like your heart is walking around outside your body mm-hmm. and being so dismissive of that. And then that's actually what it feels like. Absolutely. You know what I mean? You see yeah. your kids' feelings get hurt or you do all these things like that. I feel like that is challenging mm. and the intense love and protection. And that when you're talking about your kids, you're like immediately in your amygdala. You know what I mean? Like you are yep. in that very reactive, very reptilian part of your brain. So you're not making Like you see parents lose their mind and you're like, well, I mean, Mm. there's no excuse, but like, I get it. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, (laughs) Or that like stressed out or like how little you sleep. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You just, I haven't set an alarm in years Yep. because they just wake up. And when they wake up, we wake up. Like I don't ever wake up earlier than my children. (laughs) There's no reason to ever be awake before they are. Unless you want like a little piece of quiet. But I'd rather sleep. Spoken like a true parent. <laughs> right. Like there are these things you like sat there and you think you know. And, and that's the thing. Like you, I'm not discounting that version of me because I knew everything I knew up to that point. Yep. But I didn't know what I didn't know. Mm-hmm. And so like I didn't know that idea of just like that phone call when my dad had his aneurysm was like. Well, wow. drop. I drop. It dropped me to my knees. Like literally, sure. physically, dropped me to my knees. Mm-hmm. I don't know that loss, and and now I feel like I'm a resource. I feel like that is kind of that leadership thing of like you don't go through the battles and get the scars and do the things in your personal or professional life to tell people how to do them differently or better than they're doing them. You go through them to be a resource when shitty things happen to other people too, mm-hmm, right? Like mm-hmm. to me, that's what leadership is. It's like, mm-hmm. I'm not going to tell you. And that's like the hardest thing with kids, I think, is I can tell you how to do it right. Right. But then all you're learning is how I would do it. You're not learning how to do it wrong to then learn how to do it right. Yeah. Right? So I feel like that. I feel like that is – that's kind of the the leadership piece for me in all of that is you just it's like having having your heart broken the first time or mm-hmm. falling in love for the first time or like all mm-hmm. these like this room getting fired for the first time like you can it translates anywhere but you just there's just some things you can read about it you could have your best friend tell you about it but till it happens yeah, yeah. you just don't know and then you know and are you better for it? I don't know. I don't think there's like a qualifier that goes on. You're you're just more you because it happened to you, right? Yeah, it's just part of of your own development and growth and well, your life. Like, yeah, like everybody, right? 
Right. Totally. Ash Beckham. Dot com. Ash Beckham. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not a dot com, but you're you're great. Oh, so great. So is life really a gift? Really? Can you make every second count? That's the whole point of the podcast. So if you like what you've seen and you're inspired, because that really is my mission, then please give it a like, subscribe, and share. Shooting it raw? Yes. Shooting it raw.